In late March 2018, a scary food poisoning incident happened in Japan. A man ate a gooey duck and ended up with paralytic poisoning. He had symptoms like numb lips and overall weakness, so they rushed him to the hospital and put him on a ventilator. Luckily, they managed to save him. However, there's a fact we can't ignore. Gooey ducks accumulate toxins in their bodies throughout their entire lives. As they get older, these clams gather more toxins and become more dangerous. That happens if people eat these clams raw, as sashimi. The good news is toxins build up in a mollusk's insides, which they get rid of during cooking. But here's the catch. It doesn't always work out that way. The story I just told proves it. Gooey ducks also have this thing where they get contaminated if they live in dirty water because they basically soak up all the bad elements and store them inside. The longer they live, the more toxins they gather, and you definitely don't want to eat them. But what happens to gooey ducks if they aren't eaten before they hit the 200-year mark? Wait, what? A 200-year-old clam? Quick reminder, don't forget to hit the like button, and for those who forgot, go ahead and do it now. Let's be real. Anyone seeing a gooey duck for the first time would probably think it's, well, at the very least, weird? But the weirdness of gooey ducks goes beyond just their looks because these clams break the laws of nature, in a way. Check this out. They're incredibly long-lived creatures. Gooey ducks reach sexual maturity at three years old and remain active for a really long time still capable of reproducing until they're a whopping 107 years old. But then, when they can't reproduce anymore, they just keep on living. Except they don't do anything. For any other animal, this behavior wouldn't fly in nature. If they stop reproducing, they're basically just freeloaders competing for resources with those who can. But the gooey duck clam has a pass because it's filter feeding, sucking up phytoplankton for nutrients. It's a never-ending buffet. Plus, even non-breeding clams don't cause any problems. They actually improve water quality just by being around. Who'd be against that? But here's the thing. If gooey ducks can keep on living and serving their purpose in the ecosystem even after they can't reproduce anymore, why worry about them reaching 200 years? The catch is, as they grow older, gooey ducks lose their burrowing abilities, and they're the biggest burrowing mollusks in the world. But as time passes, their shells become stuck in the sand, unable to move. All you see poking out is a long siphon. Yep, that part of the clam that brings up some interesting associations? The siphon is so big it just doesn't fit in the shell like it does with other mollusks. Instead, part of its gooey duck just hangs out on the outside for everyone to see. I hope we won't get an 18 plus restriction on this video. What sizes are we talking about? On average, the gooey ducks pulled out of the water by fishermen weigh around two pounds, including the shell. The biggest crab ever recorded and verified by scientists weighed 8.2 pounds, but fishermen claim they've seen larger ones, like way larger. The length of a mollusk shell ranges from about six to over eight inches, but thanks to its super long siphons, the entire gooey duck gets way longer. Just its neck alone can stretch to a whopping three feet. Like I mentioned, it's the biggest burrowing mollusk out there. Divers near Discovery Bay stumbled upon this 6.4 pound gooey duck, and it's not even the biggest one out there. It looks seriously intimidating. They're also among the longest living creatures, typically living up to 140 years. The oldest known gooey duck lived to be 179 years old. But how do scientists figure out their age? Well, it's simple. It works just like with trees. You see, the age of these mollusks is determined by counting the yearly rings on their shells. Unlike trees, though, there's no need to chop up a clam to figure out its age. While 179 years is indeed a very long time, that gooey duck wasn't the oldest mollusk on Earth. Well, among the ones we found, anyway. The record goes to a bivalve mollusk called Arctica islandica, nicknamed Ming. Ming met its demise in 2006 when it was caught off the shores of Iceland. Born around 1498 to 1499, Ming was 507 years old at the time of its death. And truth be told, Ming could have lived even longer if scientists hadn't accidentally killed it during their research. Well, maybe not entirely accidentally. They simply didn't know the mollusk was that ancient and froze it. No mollusk could survive that. Here's the deal with many mollusks. They've got the potential for a long life, but only if humans don't interfere. 
Think about it. When gooey ducks grow up, they can't bury themselves again. Nature probably never expected someone would start digging them up, but humans did, and by plucking out some super old gooey duck, they're essentially signing its death sentence. Even if you toss the mollusk back, it's not going to make it much longer. So those 179 years might not have been the limit after all. People plucked the creature from the water and cut its life short, but if that hadn't happened, the clam might have just kept on going. It might have even caught up to Ming and Age, who knows? And here's what I've been wondering. Why do creatures like mollusks live for so long? I get it with turtles or Greenland sharks, but here we have essentially dense jelly in a shell. Where did its longevity come from? Well, it's all about evolution, really. First off, mollusks are ectothermic or cold-blooded, meaning they soak up warmth from their surroundings instead of generating it themselves. That means they don't go through processes that could accelerate aging, for instance, their bodies produce fewer oxygen radicals, those toxic molecules that have long been suggested as a cause of aging in organisms. To put it simply, you could say that mollusks are chill, and that's why they seem forever young. And having a slower metabolism probably gives similar advantages. Nature threw in a couple of bonuses for gooey ducks. With not many predators to worry about and less chance of being eaten, they're all set for a long life. Take Alaska, for example. The only creatures hunting these mollusks are sea otters and the dogfish. Well, occasionally starfish do it too, and given how hefty and nutritious clams can be, it's safe to say they've hit the jackpot. And they've hit it more than once. During one spawning, females release anywhere from one to two million eggs, and many of them grow into adults. Considering spawning happens several times a year, it's safe to say there is a heck of a lot of clams, which means each one has a much better shot at living up to 100 years. Oh, and don't forget the golden rule of all ecosystems. The colder it gets, the longer different sea creatures tend to live. Looking at the habitat of gooey ducks, you can see they've got everything they need for a long life. Even people who eat gooey ducks much more often than sea otters are surprisingly gentle with them. Yeah, it sounds odd to hear people and gentle in the same sentence, but it's true. It takes about 40 years for gooey duck populations to recover. Not surprising considering how long they live, that's why the overall catch limit is set at 2.7%. Any more than that, and the clams just won't have time to bounce back. Speaking of the gooey duck industry, the world's first commercial fishery for gooey duck was set up in 1970. But apparently people weren't crazy about its chewy texture at first, so demand was low. By 2011, though, gooey ducks were being sold in China for over $33 per two pounds. That's a lot. The high market value of gooey duck led to an industry worth $80 million. Like I mentioned before, people eat gooey ducks. Some believe these creatures are aphrodisiacs because of their shape, and in China, gooey ducks are considered a delicacy. In Korea and Japan, they're also valued, though they're cooked in different ways, and you can even try gooey ducks in some Asian restaurants in the U.S. Most of the gooey ducks that end up on tables come from the Pacific coast of North America, and Washington's yield can only rival that of British Columbia. Specifically, Washington earns around $22 million annually from wild gooey ducks because harvesting them requires investment. Yep, you can't just go plucking wild mollusks. This industry is strictly regulated. Around 90% of the gooey ducks produced in the United States end up in Asia. I wouldn't be surprised if the remaining 10% find their way into Asian restaurants. And this is indeed a real delicacy. Even if you've tried gooey ducks and didn't like the taste, the price tag on this mollusk clearly suggests gourmet cuisine. Crunching the numbers, you'll find that gooey ducks are three times more expensive than foie gras. And it's hardly surprising. Unlike many other sea creatures like herring or sea urchins, which can be found over vast areas, you can only catch gooey ducks in a specific spot and in a specific amount. Also, like I said before, it usually takes about 40 to 50 years before you can gather a second harvest in this region. Compared to this, other delicacies are more like everyday staples. Basically, these days, gooey duck is considered the most profitable sea creature in the Pacific Northwest. In about 90 minutes, a skilled harvester can gather around 150 gooey ducks, and even though these clams don't put up a fight, it's tough, even risky work. Fishermen drag hundreds of feet of line through the almost weightless environment, battling tides and currents. Several drivers have lost their lives while harvesting gooey ducks. Others have found themselves in dangerous situations, tangled in gear or swept away by underwater currents. 
And let's not forget the encounters with large animals, whales, sea lions, and sharks. Since all this happens at depths of up to 69 feet, running into a sea lion down there feels a lot like bumping into a hungry grizzly. You have to work under three atmospheres of pressure for an hour and a half, which is like sprinting nonstop. Veteran gooey duck divers advise against taking it slow, otherwise you won't find a single clam. You have to run. While some people are willing to take big risks and hunt for mollusks for a hefty sum, others are losing their minds over it. Can we say these oddly-looking clams can mess with your mind? Well, yeah. Ten years ago, a gooey duck dealer paid a hitman $5,000 to take out a competitor who was raising the wages of the divers. Like, seriously? And of course, when profits started rolling in, people began thinking about farming gooey ducks. There's a farm out in Shelton, Washington, where they've been growing and gathering gooey ducks since 1992, and it looks like they're doing a pretty good job at it. Farming starts with harvesting wild gooey ducks from deep sea areas. It's important to gather wild ones to avoid changing the genetic makeup of the wild population. Adult clams are then brought to an incubator on the farm. They put them on a high-fat algae diet to boost the fat content, which makes the eggs healthier. They trick the clams by putting them in warm water. Gooey ducks don't need much. Warm water signals it's time to reproduce. That's what they do. Newborn gooey ducks spend their first few days in warm, filtered water, feasting on top-quality algae, freely floating plankton, and tiny aquatic organisms called flagellates, which are protozoans. When gooey ducks get large enough to be noticeable, they start needing more than just water and food. They also require sand. Take these little gooey ducks, for example. They're ready to burrow into the ocean floor. Following nature's plan, they start digging in the sand, sticking their small siphons out, then it's time to transfer them onto a big floating raft in the closest bay. This interim phase provides a chance for clams to grow a bit before they're finally placed in the sand, improving their chances of survival. Ideally, the gooey ducks remain on the raft for anywhere from 3 to 12 months, but if their growth is slow, they can be left there for up to two years. When dealing with these creatures, it's best not to rush the process. Once clams grow large enough for relocation, workers use a sieve to sort them by size, then move them to their permanent homes on the beach. Adult specimens are typically harvested around five years to get optimal size, flavor, and texture. After all, unlike wine, there's no need for clams to age for decades. They're actually chunks of plastic pipes. Farmers use them to safeguard gooey ducks from predators such as crabs and ducks until the clams are able to burrow deeper on their own. As you remember, even in the wild, adult gooey ducks are pretty much safe. Five years later, it's harvest time. Workers wrap their hands with rubber and neoprene, plunging them into the sand up to their shoulders, then manually feel for clams. It's a delicate process, and the only help they have is a water hose. It loosens the sand, making it easier to put the hand in the sand. Actually, the habitat of gooey ducks resembles a swamp, where water jets periodically shoot up. That's what the harvesters seek, because otherwise, good luck trying to figure out exactly where the clam is buried. See that rubber band? Harvesters put it on clams for a reason. When clams are buried in sand, they feel its pressure. The muscles holding the shell closed aren't that strong, so on the surface it might just pop open. This dries out the meat and ruins the taste. So collectors have to sort of squeeze them until they end up in someone's kitchen? So let's break it down. We're talking about a limited habitat, laws that strictly regulate the collection of wild specimens, a handful of farms, and a growing demand. That growing demand has pushed retail prices for gooey ducks in Asia up to $300 for two pounds, prompting poachers to jump into the game right away. Catching poachers is really hard, especially when you're navigating through pitch black darkness with no lights or signals to guide you, and even that doesn't always do the trick. But we know that poachers leave bags of clams on the seabed to retrieve later. Sometimes they stash their loot in boat holes. Basically, they get pretty creative. Police officers need to think as creatively as poachers because gooey duck thieves are part of a serious criminal operation. Turns out the two largest poaching gangs on the northwest Pacific coast are directly involved in gooey duck poaching. It's such a valuable clam that some gangsters were trading it for illegal substances. Imagine how Tony Montana from Scarface would look in that scene if the entire table in front of him was stacked with gooey ducks. You know, it's really frustrating. It's what happens to those confiscated clams caught in violation of the law. They just get hauled off to landfills and dumped like regular trash. Although one of those boxes can cost a fortune. However, not all gooey ducks are safe to eat. Remember what we said early in the video? 
Since clams constantly filter water, they can gather up contaminants. These substances can be dangerous for anyone who dares to take a bite of such a clam. While officially caught gooey ducks are safe because they come from clean waters, poachers often harvest clams in unsafe areas. Could the gooey duck that poisoned the man in Japan have been bought on the black market? Maybe. Or perhaps it was just too old, even for a clam. So this is it. You hit the like button and I say goodbye. Seems like a fair trade to me. See you later.